Hi everyone, my name is Chrissy Kelly and I am the founder of Absent. Uh, Absent is a charity uh, registered in England and Wales and we exist to help people with um, who have lost their sense of smell. I'm making uh, this video today because there's been, we've had a lot of new members in our Facebook group who have come in reporting that they've lost their sense of smell after they had the coronavirus. This is obviously a very worrying uh, development. We are always worried about anyone who loses their sense of smell, but if this is going to be a trend and a lot of people are going to be getting the coronavirus, um, I thought now was a good time to, to come to you and give you a crash course in smell training, uh, which is potentially a very um, important way you can help yourself after you've lost your sense of smell after this virus. Um, a few words about smell training. Uh, smell training was first described in the scientific literature in 2009 in a paper uh, authored by Thomas Hummel and his uh, colleagues. Since then, it has been um, further researched. There have been a number of papers. You can see a list of, of recent research into smell training at the absent.org website. Um, you will find that under um, Learn With Us, uh, then there's a section entitled Latest Research. Um, I would describe smell training as a supportive technique. Um, you should think about it as physiotherapy for your nose. It is something that is a long-term commitment. Uh, like physiotherapy, you, needed, you need to do it frequently and you need to um, do it for a minimum of four months. I know this seems like a long time, especially if you're if you're new to the whole idea of smell loss and you're just coming in here for the first time because you've been without your sense of smell for a couple of days. I know it will um, probably make you feel quite anxious that this is going to take so long to resolve. But the good news is that in time, time is your is your friend. Uh, with time, I think you'll find that um, you know things will improve. Uh, but what you can do to help yourself is to uh, use smell training um, to do that. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about the kits. Um, I have been using smell training myself since 2013. I have been perfecting this uh, protocol in that time. Uh, you will find a full description of it with all kinds of um, downloads and other resources to help you with your smell training at the absent.org website. Um, but for those of you who really want to just see a quick video, um, I'm now going to explain to you what the kit is and how you use it. So anyone can make their own kit. Um, I always advise the use of these 30 mil um, amber jars, which you can get on eBay or Amazon. Um, it's important to use amber because amber protects the essential oils that are in the jar. Um, they, are, they don't do well in light, and they also don't do well in warm surroundings. So if you can keep them in the dark and cool, that's better. Don't keep them in the fridge because then you'll forget to use them. But um, if you keep them in the jars and keep them out of direct sunlight, they will be fine. Um, so inside each jar, there is a disc of watercolor paper. And um, I use watercolor paper because it's very absorbent, but it's also quite hard. There are not a, there are not a lot of stray fibers in it. Um, and this is the problem with things like cotton balls or cotton pads. Um, they have a lot of fibers in them and that is a breeding ground for, for bacteria. So I like the watercolor paper. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, I got this at WH Smith here in the UK. You could easily get something at, I'm sure in the art, section of Walmart or something like that if you're listening in the US. Um, I use a punch, but you can just use a pair of scissors to cut a disc that will fit in the bottom of your jar. Um, once you've done that, uh, you need to take the essential oils and you put in sort of five or six drops, however much is necessary to saturate the paper. Um, some essential oils are thicker than others, so you'll have to sort of judge that. Um, it doesn't have to be, it's not exact, an exact science how many drops you put in, but I think with five or six drops, you'll get plenty of, of smelly air in that jar when you go and open it for smell training. Um, what is smell? Smell is vol volatile molecules whizzing around in the air, and in a jar like this, you've got a good amount of, of headspace in that jar. That's to say, 
There's a lot of smelly air in there that's quite concentrated. So when you take the lid off and you approach, you bring it up to your nose, what you want to do is take little sniffs. You want to take little sniffs that will draw the air up to this part of the nose without bringing it all the way down into the lungs. And um, you want to do that for about 15 to 20 seconds. And it's really important to do that mindfully. So what do I mean by that? Um, you need to engage your memory. You need to try and conjure up that smell. Imagine what that smell would, would be like. Um, use whatever memories that you can to support that. Also try and think uh, of any sort of emotional um, connections you might have to a smell. But also it's a question of just being um, closing out all the other distractions in your mind and waiting for whatever signal might come to you. Um, it's like looking down into a really deep black well and listening for the moment when the little stone drops into the water. You, so you need to concentrate and I really can't overemphasize the importance of concentrating while you're doing that. Um, in that way, you engage the whole um, of your olfactory complex, which is not just about the nostrils. Obviously, you, we, have, um, we have an olfactory bulb that projects further into the brain where you have other parts of your brain that serve um, your, uh, your emotions and your memories and so on. So it's really important to engage all those things together. Uh, a lot of people will say, there's no point in me smell training because I can't smell anything. I would say, um, I know it seems counterintuitive, but please stick with it. It's um, many people report that after um, a couple of weeks of trying to smell and concentrating, they are suddenly able to perceive something. So don't, uh, don't give up on it immediately or, or not start because you think you can't smell anything. Give it some time. That's, that's very important. Um, so, that's sort of uh, a crash course in how to smell train. Um, I really recommend that you keep a diary. Um, recovery from smell loss happens in such tiny increments that you won't be able to notice when it's happening. And very often, because um, I'm, I'm doing some research at the moment with um, Dr. Jane Parker at the University of Reading into parosmia, so we've been seeing a lot of people who have lost their sense of smell and experience parosmia. And very often when they come in, they'll say, oh no, I can't smell and it, there's been no recovery and I'm, I'm very depressed about it and so on. When we give them a, a, smell, a, a smell test, the sniff and stick smell test, um, very often they're surprised to find out that they actually can smell. So I think part of the, um, the disconnect there uh, in, um, the way we view our sense of smell has to do with the fact that when recovery is so slow, you just aren't aware of it. So it really helps to keep a diary and in your diary, which you can download again at the absent.org website, you will see a series of questions that you might want to tick off uh, every couple of weeks um, regarding your smell training. And that will help you understand whether to what extent you have distortion uh, with your with your um, with with the smells that you have available to you, and also um, how strong they are, so um, I, I definitely recommend that. Um, I guess that's about it for today. I just wanted to say if um, if you have further questions, please come to the website. Please join the Facebook group. Um, you can find us easily just by putting absent into the um, into the search bar that's a b s c e n t um, i look forward to meeting you there or please get in touch uh, if you have any other questions you can contact me through the website and i hope that this has been informative for you um, and i look forward to meeting you sometime in the future thanks very much bye, -bye.